Hello friends, Tiger Brokers, still a damn beggars? Singapore is the base with more accounts coming from Australia. More than 90% of funded accounts already for international markets. So why worry about China? This is just to show you the past developments at Tiger Brokers. But we have to bear in mind what are we really buying. Right now, we should at least consider how to price Tiger Brokers Southeast Asia business as well as their international business. We will know that I have always sought out the US-China tension and the battle of the system that impact on Chinese tech stocks, including Tiger Brokers. Ultimately, the share price of Tiger Brokers is going to be affected by this battle between US and China, meaning the US-China tension, as well as the geopolitical and regulatory risk premiums adjustment will affect the company's share price. Now, it's not only the company's result that impacts on Tiger Brokers' share price, so why did Tiger Broker's share price appreciated over 90% within the last 5 days? The initial price jump was due to the commitment by China's state council to keep capital markets stable and support overseas listing. As well as saying that the dialogue with US regarding the ADRs is progressing smoothly. But why did Tiger Broker's jump over 33% on the day of 4Q2021 result which exceeded a 16% price jump by Futu on the same day? So it seems like the market does like Tiger Brokers result. The big premise of buying Tiger Brokers is that the leasing threat is greatly mitigated. Another will require the PBOC, meaning the People Bank of China, CSRC, the China Securities Regulator, as a safe to allow Chinese citizens to invest in overseas securities. This would be a very huge potential upside, but right now, my view is that whoever is keen to acquire Tiger Brokers will have to consider Tiger Brokers international business, meaning its business in Singapore, Australia, Hong Kong, New Zealand, etc. as a safe guard. But let's say we temporarily step aside from looking at the US-China conflict and regulatory risk in relation to the statement by a PBOC official saying that overseas investment by Chinese citizens via online brokers is not allowed. My core thesis for investing in Tiger Broker is still that the younger generations are more keen to take control of the financial future and want to be actively involved. The next question is to choose which is the investment trading platform, Tiger Brokers or Futu. I've seen how Tiger Brokers have taken the lead in Singapore market and they are also having a head start in Australia in the top 9 finance app downloaded in Australia. Own self carrying in US is over 80% by 4Q2021. Tiger Brokers is also working on self clearing of its own trades in Singapore and Hong Kong, which should improve the profitability of Tiger Brokers in the long run. Note, Futu's profit margin is above 30%, having ranged from 31% to 36% over the last few quarters. Here's the chart of the 4Q2021 funded accounts for Tiger Brokers, which increased by 61,400 in 4Q but it's slightly lower than the increase of 83,000 funded accounts in 3Q2021. Customer asset fell by 16.9%, though there is an injection of almost 2 billion USD of funds in Tiger. Why did it fall? This is due to the fall in client assets in Hong Kong and Chinese tech stocks due to the price environment. The good news is that despite the decrease in client assets, the increase in funded accounts as well as the increase in interest income for margin financing and revenue for ESOS and underwriting business resulted in 4Q revenue being higher than 3Q revenue by 2.3%. You see, 3Q2021 revenue is 60.8 million, whereas 4Q2021 revenue is 62.2 million. As for Futu, is 4Q2021 revenue 7% lower than 3Q2021 revenue comparing to that of Tiger Brokers which increased by 2.6%? Isn't that a differential of revenue changes of 10%? That shows that Tiger Brokers is doing something right, isn't it? We can't deny that operating cost is high over the last few quarters. You see, 104%, 90%, and 104% for the last few quarters. But Tiger is aggressively adding headcounts and incurring marketing expenses and data costs to grow its funded accounts. So all in all, with its huge amount of cash balance of over 270 million, I'm not so concerned. So far, you see that market has reacted very positively to Tiger Brokers' results because Tiger Brokers have recorded decent revenue growth in 4Q, whereas the market is expecting actually a lower expected revenue in 4Q2021. 
this shows that company is on the right track. This is my analysis. I would expect the company to take at least two quarters, that's half a year, to catch up for what it has incurred for its customer acquisition costs. Another good news shared by the management during the earnings conference call is that for each new user funded accounts, they have actually increased their funded amount from 5,000 USD first injection to 7,000 USD as its first injection. That's a very positive sign as well. Although we see a dip of operating cost as a percentage of revenue in 3Q2021, the increase back to around 104% in 4Q2021 is likely a result of Tiger Brokers preparing to enter into the Australian market in 1Q2022. When I look at the Tiger Brokers trading volume as a percentage of FUTU, you see that this ratio is always around 50 plus percent over the last few quarters. However, when compared against that of market cap of Tiger Brokers and FUTU, we see that Tiger Brokers as a percentage in terms of market cap to FUTU is only around 15% or even less. So, if Tiger Brokers can catch up in terms of its clearing abilities in various markets, the profit margin ratio of Tiger could edge up significantly. Adding on, that is to say that there will be a value conversion such that market will be willing to pay a lot more for Tiger Brokers compared to the current pricing of buy over dollars. US-China tension risk and regulatory risk aside, I personally find Tiger Brokers to be significantly undervalued given my core investment thesis in Tiger Brokers. Nevertheless, Tiger Brokers shares are highly volatile, meaning that they can fluctuate by 5-10%. So, I will not use leverage to acquire Tiger Brokers. For your information, I have been building a position in Tiger Brokers. As always, this should not be construed as any investment or trading advice. Thank you. Do subscribe to my YouTube channel and do give a like if you like this video. Thank you.